Oh, that that, that pic is up. It's a Sylveon. <laughs> is that Sylveon? Yes. The art style makes that really hard. Oh my god. Yeah, but that that's pretty much the the pic I was talking about was uh, you know, he puts his he puts his head into the virtual boy. What's wrong, big boy? Never had your dick su- or never had your cock sucked by Pokemon before? He goes, oh, but yes, yes, I must have more. <laughs> that that fucking scares the shit out of me, man. This is this is pretty much a uh, society in general. Like, yeah, we live like in a society. Oh, we definitely live in society. A this society, is a society I'm down to live in. This is a, this is a society that shouldn't even bother to make sex bots. Because quite frankly, they're almost already they're they're already almost obsolete already. Like like what what do we need to eat? What, what we, are we they made need? obsolete by? A fucking oh, My Little Pony plushies with a hole in the back. Well, th- you know what? That <laughs> dude, I I actually would laugh. I used to laugh at exactly that, but I think it's that and the fact Come that are. oh the oh, oh okay <laughs> okay no <laughs> okay please no please no please. <laughs> Okay, okay, oh okay, god. god. We're killing Mo. <laughs> oh, no, it's just like, let's just not ever talk about that again. Turned yellow. What? Wait, what did he say? No, uh, I didn't hear. No, like, but, uh, yeah, they're almost obsolete already because VR tech is really taken off, and the porno industry has finally started to try and corner the market on VR pornography. And quite frankly, all you really need is some like weird piston pump action, like directed at your crotch, and you're pretty you much the, good to you go. You need the BJ machine. Yeah, we well, talked about it on the dick show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. Up twerking butt. Just go at it, you know. Oh well, that that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's sort of like have you do, do you guys ever watch uh, the Venture Brothers? Do I ever watch it, or have I watched it? Well, uh, I guess like a well, you wouldn't, you you wouldn't unless you're like a big fan. I've you probably watch seen every like episode. ten total seconds of Venture Brothers. I oh, watched a little bit of it. Okay, okay, okay. I guess what I would be referencing. God, I'm going to be editing this part out. Uh, well, well that, we're not that, even that recording. Oh uh, well, yeah, I, I started recording on my OBS because I wanted to get your reactions <laughs> to that okay. picture, and then uh. What was the fuck was I about to say? Fuck. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a part in the Venture Brothers where, uh, Doctor Venture, one of the main characters, they they like knocked him upside the head and slapped a virtual reality rig on him, and then put on like a a a, a, a taxpayer bought fucking gigantic super duper souped up blowjob machine. And he's being fed his ultimate fantasy, and but by and by getting that, huh? What? Fuck was that? I don't know what that was. I thought it was seemed on Riley's end, but well, no, no, no. But uh, his fantasy. My mother barged in. (laughs) Oh, okay. Well, his fantasy was uh, it just ended up him giving up all the uh secret intel of his company. And so, like, he just didn't care at all. He just blabbed it all away just because of a souped-up BJ machine and VR tech headset. Uh, so, yeah, 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 man. Uh, I, I honestly do think that I don't think uh, uh, sex bots are they, – they might not even have to be a thing. I think all the feminists are just getting their dander up for, like, really no reason, and everyone's just going to go like, – immediately go into the VR world. Because I are think... feminists against sex bots? That seems like yes, a thing because... that they should be for. Yes, like, because when it objective the guys who to... would be the guys who would be raping us are using these sex bots. Well, instead. yeah, like true. Like what, what, what the problem? You know what? Hold on a sec. Let's get in the live recording real quick. Let's get in the live recording. Okay, good. Good. I I want this on, on the record. Ugh. Now recording. Thank you, Craig Bot. Thank you, Craig Bot. I'll be deleting yesterday's recording from you uh, promptly. But anyway, uh, yeah, 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 man. Fucking feminists uh, uh, have gone absolutely batshit over the idea of sex bots because it quote it, well it, it's it, it doesn't even read as English when you actually read the reason. So I'm going to give you my best interpretation. It super duper objectifies women, and it might cause the evil men with the penises of doom to commit even super duper rape <laughs> on the whammy 
who are ultra, super duper, no gives these vaccines oppressed, who don't even have a, a, a place in this world, and yet there's more women CEOs and, and presidents of companies that there ever have been in humanity's fucking history. But, you know, there's. Also, super... aren't there more women than men in general? Aren't they the majority of the population? Yeah, and they're fucking still all stuck up and have a stick up their asses. I mean, like, you got everything you want and you're still crying. You know, and and like I guess, I guess there's a place for like so, there's totally places for like first and second wave feminism, like because that just had like a little bit of nutballs, but the feminists in general like check their nutball extremists, but this new crop, it's just aggravating. They just bitch about everything, and just quite frankly, I'm just fucking sick. And yeah, it, like it really, they they really are against sex bots. For other, like, for, for lunatic fucking reasons, like, it's almost like, it's almost like going to fucking Narnia, or going to Imagination Land, and having to sing that stupid fucking song, Imagination Land. Like, we really are going there, uh, uh with, with, like, the third waivers, when they start, like, fucking blathering on about sex bots and, and all that weird shit. Like, the unfortunate truth is, like, you know, it, it's... You want us to cut down on the crime, right? Well, I mean, what do you care if a bot gets raped? What's it going to do? Like, cry in the corner? Like, you know, in robot? Like, oh, God, I'm so dirty. I am a whore. Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, what the, who the fuck cares? They're robots. You know? Oh, no. And my I know that, is uh, God. My virtue. I'll never get a good husband now. <laughs> Oh no! You know, like, come on, man. They're they're fucking robots, dude. Do we have to care about everything? And like, the future I... is women. Uh, the future is zero one zero zero one one zero one. You know, I'm like, fuck, man. I I just want to play video games and get my tick suck. Uh, well, hey, at the same game, time, so. huh? I said, welcome to the card game episode. Yes, welcome to the card game episode. <laughs> welcome to the MoCast. I am your host, Mo Diggity. Today, we're going to be talking about board games, card games. Which monster like from the card game do you want to be, do you want the sex bot to be modeled after? Oh, see, that's the thing. It's, the limit is your imagination. You can fuck a million Charizards if you want, you know? Like, just go at it. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, uh Yo. Yo, Board, a... Dark Magician Girl? I was gonna say Dark, dark Magician girl. girl. Yes, yes, yes. Like, Dark Magician Girl's <laughs> pussy and asshole, just all the holes, are just gonna get worn out. And it's just like, you, you feel bad for, for, like, some of these characters, but they're also not no, real, you know. so... Yeah, it, it, I was about to say, that they're also not real, so who cares? But anyway, in, enough of my, uh, 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 uh rape apology... And, and all that stuff, and by rape apologies, I mean, I'm not really, but really seriously, people do, have you, who do fucking you maintain cares about a, robots. a list of uh, sex robots to rape? Uh, yeah, actually, yes, and it's on, like, 8chan on the deep web. Ooh, the <laughs> the deep... MoCast 8chan thread? Oh, yes, the Mo, the, the MoCast, yeah, it's on the 8chan board <laughs> on the super duper deep dark web that maintains all the active rape lists. That Max just can't seem to get into, so he can prove uh, uh, anything at all. Like it's it's it, it's on the uh, it's the board that has all the evidence that Maddox needs <laughs> to fucking bust Dick Asterios, fucking everyone in the show circles, man. Like just it's it's right there, right? But I'm not gonna let you in. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just poor poor little. Uh, uh, Dark Magician Girl. God damn. And probably Dark Magician, too. Because you gotta think about, like, there's That's there's the no... Girls, the girls want that one. They want the Dark Magician mod. Dude, check this out. I, I think it's gonna open up a whole new avenue for a type of degeneracy that we've never even thought of before. We thought Oh, of it. no. All the My Little Ponies. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, like, no. And, and, like, dude, Dark Magician guy is just gonna have... Uh, he's gonna be the one huddling in the corner going, why, God, why, God, why? I, I think Did you that's... grow and sigh with all their lollipops? Oh, my God. See, like, you know, fine. If, you know, if that happens, I'll be, I'll be fine with everything. Like uh, all is all is well within the universe. Just just give the people their their bread and circuses. Fuck it, just fuck it, just just here. They're, they're sex robots. Go crazy.
talking about card games, specifically, you know, Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, that, hell, even fucking Blackjack and Hookers, I don't give a shit. You know, we're going to be talking about those kinds of card games, because uh, we're all huge fans of uh, uh, one card game or another at the very least. And this all started when uh, Robin and I uh, went fucking to town uh in in mtg arena on each other with just like all sorts of decks and uh, a spoiler alert robin kicked my ass pretty roundly i think i got like a, a best of seven uh, i think i won two out of the round or two rounds out of them and and robin got me yeah. the rest of them but yeah it's a it's a fantastic on game. today's riley is a fucking idiot moment i just realized the mtg and mtg arena stood for magic the gathering amazing amazing <laughs> Amazing. Oh, Amazing. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yada yada yada. Um, yeah, it's uh, I've been playing MTG Magic: The Gathering for those Rileys in the audience who don't know what MTG stands for. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> uh, uh, I've been playing this uh, since about ninety eight, ninety nine, and it's just been a fantastic game. I've been in the game a really long time, and to see uh, a lot of the old card games get the respect that they deserve. And get some digital, get their digital counterparts on, get their digital on, get their internet on. You know, it's really good because I just heard that Yu-Gi-Oh. I think it's like Upro or Yugo or some some shit like that. There's YGO a, Pro. YGO Pro. Thank you. Uh, apparently, that's now on the internet, and I'm it's really excited. A, it's more of a simulator than a like an actual game. Okay. Do you would you? Yu-Gi-Oh's mind never gotten. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh's never gotten like a really good like online card game service. We had like this shitty one for uh can't even remember the name of it. It was just a website. Yeah, we we had like a shitty website where you had to do everything manually and then we evolved into getting like a simulator basically, which was just it was as close to a game as we were going to get. Yeah. But you had to know about Yu-Gi-Oh to use it basically. You had to know what you were doing. So it wasn't very opening to to new players. It wasn't very welcoming. Oh, okay. So uh, th- there were just a ton of problems then, and it's just uh, oh, unfortunately, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh hasn't had its comeuppance yet. It hasn't been able to get uh, anything resembling a really great card game. That's that's a shame. Uh, not digitally, I, anyway. Not digitally. Well, I'm hoping in the future that the makers of, uh, of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh rectify this because I, I do want to see like an, an MTG Arena esque. Uh, a uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh situation because I never really got well. I had the opportunity to play well both Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, but I was just so obsessed with Magic: The Gathering. I just decided to put all my time into just the one. And looking back at it, I really wish that I played at least Yu-Gi-Oh. Like Pokemon, I'm kind of okay with. Yeah, I, I think the games are kind of cool, but I, I don't really think that the uh, the the card game was more my speed. You know what I mean? Riley, uh, do you happen to have anything to add to this? The Pokemon card game is something that I really I really like the Game Boy Color game because that's like the original iteration of the trading card game, and I think that's really fun. But it got way too fucking complicated. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, uh, th- those card games, Yu-Gi-Oh, MTG, and the like, you really had to at least have a friend that was obsessed with it and who could kick down all of the uh, new knowledge that you don't know just in case you're taking, like, an expansion break or something. Because for a little while, I, I was playing, and then uh, they came out with these... Uh, it-, it was... I-, I-, I got back into MTG back in, like, 06, 07, and that was right around the time that they were starting to do this uh, Asian flavor expansion or whatever that had samurais and shit. And half the... Uh, or most actually of the uh, uh, expansion exclusive stuff that you can do, like the uh, like like banding and all that stuff. They they apparently didn't really carry anything from those expansions onward because like no one I, that I know seemed to have liked the, those iterations of MTG or those expansions. Uh, that's yeah, actually that's seems... actually a really interesting point. Is that um, Yu Gi Oh is the only one that kind of lets you. Uh... The, sta- the standard Yu-Gi-Oh format is most of the cards are available to be played. There's just one ban list of just cards that are not allowed. Yeah, what well, do you mean for like tournament uh, uh, mode and stuff like that? Tournament yeah, because Magic has like a like a rotation. Hearthstone has a rotation of cards. You know, the the past like couple of years worth yeah. of cards. 
like different sets. But Yu Gi Oh is kind of like use whatever you want except for these cards, these like hundred, two hundred cards. Like, yeah, because you know these are these cards are a bit too overpowered, and I know everyone wants to recreate their Yu Gi Kaiba dual experience. But maybe you guys don't need about like eight kind of iterations of blue eyes white dragon on the thing. Maybe just a little bit too overpowered, you know. Sucks the fun out out of it, you know. It's it's like why MTG banned uh, the channel fireball combination because like if you were even one like what what channel does is like you you pump in two green two force and you uh, you convert. Your, you can't you can convert as many of your life points as you want into any mana color mana uh, uh, that you want right weird card for a green card right and oh, someone would just really bust, weird, yeah, yeah or someone would just bust out like disintegration or the more popular one fireball because uh, uh, fireball if I recall correctly was just slightly cheaper and uh, they, if they would just target the freaking person. And, you know, I'm at 19, you're at 18. Well, I hit you for 18 points using 18 points of my fucking life. Boom. Fucking done, dude. Uh, also, like, the first turn for Exian Negator, that was a really nasty card, too. Because, like, you can get, like, a one swamp out, uh, then you tap that for, like, a dark ritual, which gives you three uh, uh, emergency black mana to use during that turn. Or else you get hit with some uh, mana burn, right? And you can use that to summon a Phyrexian Negator, which is uh, 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 j- exactly three mana, three black mana to be more specific. Uh, well, no, two colorless and one black. And uh, it had Trample and it had Haste. And when it hit a player, uh, that for every point of damage a player would take, uh, that... Shut up! Really? God, you fucking stupid dog, really. <laughs> mark that down. Yeah, mark that down. Uh, that is about 18, we'll say 17 right there, just so I can have a point of reference. All right, but anyway, anyway, anyway. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, 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 if if you can get a Phyrexian Negator, oh, it, it, for every point of damage you take from the, uh, from the from the creature, you'd have to discard that many number of cards. So your ass would get decked almost immediately. And what, what were the stats on that card? Oh, it, it, it was a uh, uh, haste, trample, and for every point of damage that the, that a player takes from that creature, you have to discard that me- my, uh, that amount of cards. So, say you take three damage, that's three fucking that's three cards gone out of your initial hand right then and there. So they they, they recognize that, and, and dark ritual is a very dangerous card too. <laughs> so they they ban the shit. Uh, those four cards almost immediately. Well, after they they found after they found that people were using the loopholes and stuff, which is just too damn funny. But you got you yeah. got to make it legit competitive. It seems like their play tests have gotten a little bit better, and that doesn't happen quite as much. Yeah, yeah, because there was a uh, there was madness from both uh, both the for and against uh, those things. Like the the MTG uh, uh, the crowd. I don't know how much uh, how bad it is or good it is on. The other two, like say Pokemon's or uh, uh, the Pokemon or uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh side, but like the 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 people in MTG in the MTG uh, uh, crowd are just absolutely absolutely batshit because you, every every uh, uh, banned card has a huge point of contention and just like and uh, uh, there's there's just too much uh, uh, push back from back and forth and it's like a it's like a fucking blood match, man. It's like a blood sport. <laughs> Banning Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yu-Gi-Oh is pretty good about it. Yu-Gi-Oh, the Yu-Gi-Oh community is most of the time just like, oh, that sucks, it got banned. You know? Yeah. Just, just kind of a casual, like, oh, well. See, make, we'll just make something new. Yeah, see, God, I wish I had that. I really wish I did. I mean, it makes it a little bit interesting to watch these go fucking batshit. But, you know, at the same time, it's sort of like, hey, can we just all, like, start gaming together again? Because we're all fighting and arguing with each other. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, so let's go ahead and just switch uh, 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 switch the speed up here a little bit. What, uh, Robin? We'll go ahead and start with you, since uh, since you've been in the uh, into these games and all that, and since you're, I, I think you said you're primarily into Magic the Gathering. Uh, now I'm I'm oh, okay. getting back into Magic the Gathering, but 
I, I come from a, a history of playing a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, okay, okay. Well, then tell you what. What's your what's your favorite expansion or whatever is considered an expansion in Yu-Gi-Oh? And your favorite expansion in MTG? Like, what what would you love? What what did you love about those? Um, it's it's hard for me to talk on expansions for Magic because I'm not I'm not that ingrained into it yet. Okay. Um, or I've never been like super ingrained to the to the point where I could talk on expansions. Oh, okay, um, okay. For Yu-Gi-Oh, it's it's more a matter of like meta games, like less than expansions. Oh, okay. Could you um, explain to me then what a what a meta game is then in the Yu-Gi-Oh context? Yeah, a meta game is just you know one card can come out in a in a set in Yu-Gi-Oh, just a single card, and it can change the whole game um, in in favor of a deck that's already existed for you know years. You know, uh, a certain type of deck that's existed for uh, you know five years ago could suddenly make a comeback because one card came out in a new set, you know, a new uh, like pack release, which is kind of interesting. It's just like a little bit of support that the deck needs to move forward. I really, really like that idea a lot. I like that concept a lot. Uh, I really liked um, Sylvans were really cool. It was um, uh, Sylvans were expensive, and card games can get really expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, Sylvans were ranging like thirty bucks per card (laughs) at one point, and they were like these little uh, like leaf creatures. and they just had a lot of like special summoning them from your deck, so you'd just get this massive board, and you'd be searching through your deck constantly to get more of these cards. See, I'm not familiar with the uh, how the board or the deck uh, uh, works in the Yu-Gi-Oh uh, uh, in the Yu-Gi-Oh scene. Uh, I know how it works really well on the MTG scene, but when people talk about boards and decks and stuff in uh, in, in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like I I lose fucking track of time, and I just have no idea what they're talking about. So could you briefly explain to me what 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 that what that means? What 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 does the the board and deck uh, uh, terminology mean overall for the uh, sake of the game? So in Magic: The Gathering, it's really intuitive to understand because you have mana, and that's just what you can do per turn, right? You have a certain amount of mana, you can spend that mana to do certain things. And that's pretty much all you can do. Mm-hmm. But in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's it's a lot looser with the rules. Um, you can normal summon once per turn, so you can play a card that is uh, four stars or lower uh, once per turn, or you can you know sacrifice a, a card to play a, a higher star card. Um, but the more the more popular way of summoning cards is special summoning, and there's no real restriction on special summoning. Um, you just have to have a card that enables you to do it. So you can use a card's effect to special summon. Uh, you could use like a spell in order to special summon. Um, and a, a lot of the more popular decks uh, involve using uh, or playing a um, a creature that allows you to special summon another creature that allows you to special summon more creatures and kind of barrel off of that. Oh, okay, so there's not really any kind of mana or like any kind of currency that you have to pay in order to uh, summon a creature then? You just have to have effects and, or uh, uh, situations then that can uh, summon said creature? Yeah, the currency is oftentimes the cards you have. Oh, okay, and okay. Your, and your life, of course. You can you can spend your life a lot of the time. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that that's... God, that's really fucking cool. That's, that, that's like a whole other level of uh, strategy... And, and it's thinking, very complicated. Yeah, that that sounds very very complicated. And personally, like a lot of people, that they, they get turned off by the complicated nature of these games. But for me, that's my favorite part of it because any game that really makes me think, uh, I I can love almost immediately. Like I didn't think I would ever play any other card game besides Magic: The Gathering. And there was this one, uh, there's this one card game where you didn't have any. Any uh, uh, mana or any like uh, currency that you had to use in order to summon something, you had uh, you had what other whatever cards you could put out for whatever the conditions were, and you had four cards face down in front of you that acted as a barrier, and you had to get past the barrier to hit the player, and if you got past the player and hit the ba- uh, uh, if you uh, bleh, fuck man, mark that down. Mark that uh, down, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you can get past the barrier 
and hit the player even at least once, that's it's basically game over. I, I think uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh has sort of a certain a, a similar condition, or or uh, uh, I, I don't know how the how does the damage work exactly? How does how does the damage uh, 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 distribution uh, work in Yu-Gi-Oh? Or is it just like essentially the same? Or God, I'm I'm not even sure what I'm saying. I guess what I'm saying is this: like I see, like you can you can hit someone for like a hundred points, or like you know a few thousand points, or or, or whatever have you. But it seems that that there's always like a group of little cards that could just obliterate a player and just uh, knock them right off of the board. It, it, it is what I'm is what I'm saying. Uh, anything at all. That what happens uh, that happens in the card game, or it has the uh, the anime uh, of Yu-Gi-Oh affected me so much that I, <laughs> whenever I see you, uh, whenever I see uh, I see Kaiba go, Wah! you know, or something like that, Wah! you know, is is that is that what I'm thinking of? Maybe I'm thinking of the TV show. You have uh, eight thousand life points in Yu-Gi-Oh, and that's where both players start. You start at eight thousand and eight thousand. Um, the cards that you can generally normal summon are in, like, the 1,200 uh, attack range. Mm -hmm. Cards have attack and defense, and you can play them in either attack position or face-down defense position, so you don't know what it is. Okay. Uh, So, in Yu-Gi-Oh!, all cards have trample, basically. Um, Oh, okay, okay. That's the simplest way to put it to a magic player, is all cards have the trample effect. So, you know, if your opponent has a a card that has, you know... uh, 2600 uh, attack and your card has you know 2200 you can kill their card and deal 400 damage to your opponent um if they have nothing on the board you can just hit them in the face for you know uh what did i say 2600 or whatever you just hit them with your cards so a lot of the times you'll you'll end up uh in a situation where you're getting hit for a lot of damage cool cool so it kind of really is Sort of like the anime in a sense, where you're sort of like, I blocked you, haha, but I put this on, and goodbye, bitch. Roar! Michael Bay explosion. Blah, 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 blah. See, I, mean, I-, I imagine the anime finds its basis in the real game. Like, it might take some liberties, but. It takes a lot of liberties. I- it takes I ha- a lot of liberties, but some things make sense. Okay, are, are you talking about Yu Gi Oh! or what did, what did you say? Magic? I thought we were talking about you. Oh, yeah, okay. Your anime. Yeah. Oh, okay. My bad. My bad. I thought you were actually. Is there talking... a magic anime? Well, I thought for a second that you said magic anime, and I was about to like cream my pants and go, "What? I didn't hear anything about that. That's fucking awesome." And you, you know, know a TV can't... show or something? Uh, no, I haven't seen any TV shows or anything really past. Uh, I don't even think I've seen any comic books or or little like uh uh you know FMV. Uh, game style freaking snippets or anything. nothing like that. Nothing like Overwatch. Nothing like Hearthstone. It's always just uh, seems to exclusively be the cards and the game itself in MTG. Yeah, it looks like the Russo brothers are making a Magic: The Gathering TV series on Netflix. Really? Oh, cool! I would love to check that out, man. Because I, I I really do think that MTG needs. A, I think it should be represented a little bit represented a little bit better. Uh, uh, on the on the in in media and on the TV screen, I think w- with that it would just be a fucking fantastic. Uh, I think it would be a fantastic freaking TV show at the very least. But uh, uh, Riley, do you have anything that you'd like to add, or anything you'd like to talk about with this with these uh, games? Like uh, uh, like uh, what game did you uh, play growing up? I honestly. I never really comprehended these kind of card games growing up. Like, I think the closest I ever came was I played Pokemon trading card game online on my laptop sometimes when I was younger, on my grandpa's laptop, rather. I didn't really know what I was doing. Oh, okay, I was so... Like, look at the Pokemon. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So you don't really have, like, a, a too much of opinions on the games at all, at, at all that, then? Well, I've started to play them in recent times. Well, the more, like, the older, dumbed-down versions, like... Like I said, I've played the Game Boy Color game based on the Pokemon trading card game, and I've had fun with that. I play, um, I've played Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Academy for the Game Boy Advance, which is based on the uh, the old GX meta game, and I have a lot of fun with that. It's a game I've been meaning to let's play, but I keep putting it off for some reason. <laughs> okay, 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 cool, cool, cool. So, like, uh, what, like, what? 
think back to when you you first played that. Uh, what was it on the Game Boy Color? You said that was the tr- Pokemon trading card game. Yeah, I played it on the Game Boy Color. Oh, okay, okay. You know, so like, uh, uh, since you're a bit older now, uh, what do you think about those games that you you play? Like, what what is your impression? Do you do you wish that you played them when you were a little bit younger, or are you perfectly fine where you're at at the age that you're at right now playing those games? I would have liked to have played them when I was younger, because then maybe I would have. I would understand them more. Like my main problem with these games is like I have no comprehension of how to build a deck. Like the game hands me a deck, or if in real life somebody's like, "Here's this deck, play me," I'll be able to figure myself out pretty quickly and perform pretty well. But I have no idea how to build a deck. There's this really cool new concept. It's called net decking. Net decking. Uh, I've never heard of that. (laughs) I was half joking. I thought maybe one of you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. Oh, no, I, I thought it was an actual thing. I was like, oh, no, net, net decking. It, it, it is sort of a, a newer in the online generation. It's just people post their decks online. Oh, and you just okay, rip them. okay, okay. Yeah, so like, there's a lot of like Hearthstone is a, is a big one for this. There's a lot of resources online where you can just look up what the, the popular decks are. You can post your own on there. I, w- I wish there was an easier way them. to find a Yu-Gi-Oh deck because I did go looking for one once. Me and my... Uh... My buddy Jinji, who I do a lot of content with, were uh, throwing around the idea of dueling in YGO Pro. So I just, like, looked up on the internet trying to find, like, what I looked up was hyper-offensive Yu-Gi-Oh decks, because that's how I like to play, just do do big murders. And I couldn't I couldn't really find, like, any decks. Yeah, you kind of have to know what, um, what archetype of deck you're playing. Because, uh, you know, in Magic, it's really easy, because you just look up, like, blue decks you know or red decks there's just five colors you just pick you know, yeah pick one. yeah yeah but in Yu-Gi-Oh, you have to go like you know uh L- light sworn deck you have to like a specific type of deck i was hoping the- hyper offensive deck would get me something but it didn't <laughs> <laughs> oh you, i hope you just checked out the web pages and not the images because you probably would have found something much more different then <laughs> well i looked up Yu-Gi-Oh specifically I don't oh, think yeah. there's any... Yeah, I don't know if that really matters to Google. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my oh my god, I can't believe this is actually really happening. But uh, anyway, I, I guess moving on from that, uh, were you ever a fan of the TV show? Oh, hell yeah. Alright, alright, cool, cool, cool. Like, tell me about some of your favorite memories from watching the TV show as a kid. Like, what blew your mind? Like, how did you feel the very first time Yugi defeated Kaiba... You know, the first time you saw the well, Blue Eyes White Dragon. Yeah, that. I'm 17, so I actually grew up with a 5Ds. Oh, that bro. was the one that was playing when I was a kid. All right, I'm not familiar with that one at all. Go ahead and lay it on us, bro. It's, uh, it's Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's on motorcycles, and it's edgy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like 90s edgy with like, you know, a product extreme product placement all over the place? I don't know if I'd go that far. It's like it's 2000, it's more maybe. like really, oh, that really is... edgy, futuristic. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, shit. So I, I guess I am thinking about the early 2000s, not uh, late 90s. I, I used to because like the, the the fucking extreme marketing thing used to like it, it made like all those cool shows that they they sort of targeted the Yu Gi Oh esque type shows like that, and it would either make or break it. Or uh, it would just really just make it would just annoy the shit out of you, and you wouldn't you wouldn't know what the fuck was going on in the show. But goddamn, if I didn't want some extreme nachos, <laughs> you know. Did but, you guys uh, watch uh, season zero of Yu Gi Oh? No, nah, I never watched it. What that? Season zero is uh, Japan. So Japan made Yu Gi Oh first, of course. Of course. Um, and then eventually, four kids made a deal with Japan to like take over the the anime and westernize it. Um, and Japan was like, okay, cool, you can take Yu-Gi-Oh, but you're not allowed to touch the the first season that we made. That's that's our oh, thing. Shit. So there's there's a season zero of Yu-Gi-Oh, um, which is uh, just it's it's not even card game related. It's just Yugi going around turning into Yami Yugi, making bets with people, and then killing them by sending them to the dark realm. Holy oh my shit! God. <laughs> Holy fuck, that's just brutal Yeah, I have shit. little to no experience with the OG Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Like, I'll see episodes here and there. I actually, um, as a kid, this is kind of funny, my most exposure to the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series was I had a Game Boy Advanced video cartridge of the um, 
the oh, like couple of episodes. The cu- it was the couple of episodes where Yugi was dueling Joey, and like one of them would die or something. Like they were hooked up to like a thing. It was Merrick was doing a bad, being the villain as villains do. Yeah, you know, if I may just like step in for just one second, I I want to ask a question, and I've been wanting to ask this for years to a bunch of Yu Gi Oh fans. Do do the rules even apply to the bad guys at all? Because half the time no. it's sort of like the bad guys don't even try and follow the rules at all, and they just like they just get fucked. They just fuck up everything. It constantly. sets it up pretty early on with Pegasus using the Millennium Eye to literally look at Yugi's hand. So they really, yeah, I, I think I remember that a little bit. That's just so that's just so fucked up that like there's there's no like a magic that protects the players from interfering in one another's. Uh, 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 I guess like a, a up upkeep. Uh, well, mm-hmm. that would be the MTG term for it, or their their upkeep phase. Like they just can't just blatantly cheat. Like because like every freaking Yu Gi Oh bad guy that I can recall, it never really follows the fucking rules at all. They're like, "Well, huh, I'm playing this card. You just can't do that." Blah blah blah. Shut up, Joey, you little bitch. You know, like and Joey's <laughs> and Joey's <laughs> always the one, the the little bitch that's like, "No, the thing's clearly states." And Kaiba's just basically jacking off like right in front of him. Go, yeah, that's Screw the rules. Yes, I have money. Please tell me more about your precious fucking rules. I don't care, Joey. Shut up. And he just yells at him like Joey's the bitch of the series. I've noticed. Like if well, I recall in season correctly, zero, at least. Joey threw the millennium uh, the Millennium Puzzle into a river. <laughs> He's just he was just a, a school bully to Yugi. Oh really? Isn't yeah. there a flashback to that in the in the four yeah, kids that's, stuff? That's, I feel like I remember that from the Game Boy Advance video. That's why in season one, like the first episode, there's a bunch of like backstory that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> because the characters already have some development going on where Joey was just like a total fucking asshole to Yugi. <laughs> so, yeah, it, I clearly it, remember a flashback of him throwing the Millennium Puzzle into the water from the, those episodes that I had on Game Boy Advance video. I never got to watch that. Man, y'all are going to get me watching fucking Yu Gi Oh anime again? Jesus. It's, it's really like, good. It's like I'm I've fucking 16 or 17. I've been like the first two seasons of GX a couple years ago, and I fucking loved it. Oh, man. All right, all right, all right. I'm probably going to be doing that later. All right, um, let's I see. have the, the wild card card game to ask you guys about. Really? Yeah. Uh, have, have either of you uh, played Gwent? Gwent? I believe no. I've heard of it, but I don't, I've don't. i never played it, no. Never Gwent played is, it or it. Okay, Gwent is one of those card games that was made in a video game. Like, it wasn't the main star of a video game. It was uh, a card game that you could play against NPCs in The Witcher. Oh, cool. Ooh. And it got turned into a real card game because people who played The Witcher loved it so much. It's, um, it's they made, really... like, an actual good card game as a side thing in a video game? Yeah, they, and then they turned it into a standalone game. Gwent, the, the, uh, the Witcher card game, whatever. That's I, awesome. I wish, That's more, cool. I, I wish more companies would do that because I'll, I'll admit that I'm a huge huge Adventure Time fan be, be, <laughs> despite being old as fuck and you know despite it being a new show I, I still love the shit out of it and I really really want the card game that Jake can't play because he loses his shit every single time someone they turned like, into a mobile game I think oh they, they did well See that's fun if that's if that really is the case, but I want the I want exactly what they had though. I I want the electronic board to where I can put my little card down and it pops up like you know like a field or a graveyard or like a a Jake the dog or Finn the human, and they we can I can send them to fight each other. You know, I I would absolutely love to have that, but unfortunately until. Everyone pulls their heads out of their ass, technologically speaking. Uh, I don't think we'll ever see that. Like, cause I, I would love to see a, a Yu-Gi-Oh type. Co- I guess this is the Yu-Gi-Oh podcast today, cause I, <laughs> I got about like five more minutes. We're trying to hit fifty right now, and it's it's hot as shit back here. So we're we're just going to keep it a little bit short. But uh, um, I would love to see a Yu-Gi-Oh or an MTG style game. Uh, uh, brought to life on the tabletop. 
Because I, I know it would be expensive Oh my god, as real shit. Yu-Gi-Oh hologram projectors? Yeah, that's, that's exactly <laughs> what I want. Exactly what I want. Are you going to have a big towering blue eyes dragon when you play your card? Well, I, I guess we can minim- Oh god, that would be really cool. Maybe we can go fucking nuts about it and do like the VR chat people do and have sensors uh, all around your apartment. So you can make, it, theoretically, your entire apartment or your living uh, quarters uh, a freaking Yu-Gi-Oh freaking uh, uh, studio or a uh, 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 stadium. There we go, a Yu-Gi-Oh mm-hmm. stadium. Uh, yeah, God, I would love that. That would be so great. Just like a which huge is, football stadium for Yu-Gi-Oh. Which is really fitting. Yes. That's that's how the Duelist Kingdom worked, right? Didn't they all like link up into VR, basically? Like Duelist Kingdom? Uh, I'm not 100% sure because like, I've forgotten a lot about this stuff. Like Pretty I, sure that was Kaiba's like company, where like everyone like linked into VR and like went into like a, a dueling world. Christ, yeah, that was I for really the game that was for Duel Links. Christ, I really That's am going to have. That. I really am going to have to watch the entire show after this, man, because <laughs> there's so much that I want to remember. You know, all right, I have something to confess. I I used to watch Yu Gi Oh all the time, but the problem is, I would only be able to watch a certain amount of episodes, and it would be right when it'd get into the thick of things. So I've never actually seen uh, uh, Kaiba lose or any of the really big, uh, any of the really big moments in the show because I, I was just I was in high school at the time, and I, I just some shit would just go down, and I just never playing got to watch it again. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and I guess uh, uh, wrap this up, uh, Riley. What, what's your well, like? What, what's uh, what's your favorite uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh show moment? Since you didn't play the card game, we'll go with shows. Uh, my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh show moment probably it's probably gonna be something from GX because that's the one I watched most recently. I binge watched like two out of the three dubbed seasons a couple years back. Cool. Like, what, what um, what's one of your favorite scenes? I it's hard to pin down a scene. Like, the best answer I could think of is, like, literally every single interaction between Chaz and the Ojamas, because it's just so fucking <laughs> hilarious. Uh, what, why would they be hilarious? What would they, like, fucking, uh, oh, would they come up to them or something, like, uh, uh, freaking, you know, just snapping their fingers about to rumble or some shit like that, since they're all a bunch of The bunkers. Ojamas were his, uh, monsters. Like, he, the, some of the cards would have, like, real spirits inside of them, and that oh, was no the shit. Ojamas. The Ojamas for Chaz, and it kind of like changed Chaz's character once he had and met the Ojamas, because Chaz was like the generic like bully, I'm better than you character, mm-hmm. and he sort of started to develop once he had this relationship with the Ojamas, because the Ojamas are like the Ojamas are comic relief. The Ojamas are silly and wacky, and it's really funny to see them butt heads with like the super like arrogant Chaz dealing with these three fucking. Stooges. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, Robin, uh, tell me, uh, uh, like, uh, blah, fuck that, mark that down. Uh, 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 46, uh, what, what was it about? Um, go ahead and uh, give us what would be one of your favorite scenes or uh, what the, you know what, in your case, like, what would be like a favorite deck you'd love to play with in Yu-Gi-Oh? Oh, man, I, I don't even know if it's still possible to play them in the meta. But I would I loved my mermail deck, which were it was like fish people. Fish it was people? just such a yeah, it was just such a fun deck to play. It was good for a little while, and I kept playing it even when it wasn't. It was just it just felt so intuitive to me. Sometimes you just get a deck that calls out to you, you know. Oh, dude, that's usually like a red and black deck for me in MTG. Like, there's so many freaking things that I can do if I just have the uh, if I can just. Get enough mana out there. It's because, like, blue just counters fucking everything in the world and, like, hits you with little annoying uh, fucking uh, puppets, right? But then you have your, your, your black monsters, which are, like, your lore of the pits and your in, in the enchantments, like, breeding pits uh, and, and all of this shit, dark ritual, yada, yada, yada. Uh, uh, sadistic glee. Sadistic glee. Uh, was one of the best little cool enchantments that you can ever put on a monster, because every time that you'd kill a monster, uh, you would get a one-one token, or one. Uh, it would just be permanent, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that 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 would just just it would just be so much fun to watch the the smile 
uh, drained from the douchebag Kyle's that I used to uh, play his face. Uh, yeah, Kyle, I still remember you, bitch. Uh, you know, he, he's not listening, so I can talk all the shit in the world that I want. Uh, but uh, I totally interrupted you. Go ahead, Robin. Like, like you know, um, what, what, what's your what's one of your favorite scenes in the Yu-Gi-Oh cartoon in the anime? It honestly, the finale of the original Yu-Gi-Oh is one of the best of Yugi taking down the Pharaoh, taking down the gods. It's just, it's so satisfying to watch the like the journey come to an end. You know. Cool, cool. Did the real finale get dubbed for the original? Unlike every subsequent season. Oh yeah. The real like manga finale got got dubbed. Okay, because with GX and Five Ds, they would they uh, skipped the final seasons to skip to the next series. So that that was real lame. Oh wow, that that would really piss me off if I got if I were like a huge fan and I got gypped like that. Man, I would just like lose my shit. We okay. never got to see Jaden duel Yugi. We never got to see the main characters hash it out because they do that in the finale, but the final season never got dubbed. Oh, well, I, I guess in that case, you'll just have to watch it Japanese subbed. They all have different names in the sub, and it's confusing. Cause four kids it's so, I just don't names. understand. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude! Wow, like, all right. No, I'm just. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, my bad. My bad. I'm sorry. Uh, no, like, unfortunately, dude, I, I've had to watch so many popular uh, uh, animated American or animated shows uh, before they came out in America, just because it would take forever for, like, say, four kids or Funimation to pump out their freaking English dub. So, and I would get impatient and. When, whenever uh, I heard, uh, whenever I heard, what the fuck is that? Uh, whenever mark that I, down. Uh, mark that down, shit. Uh, uh, whenever I would hear, like, Vegeta, instead of going, Kakarot, you go, Kakarot, you know, that that would fuck with my head a little bit. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah. waited. I waited pretty staunchly for the Dragon Ball Super dub, but then, like, I waited for so long for the Dragon Ball Super dub to wrap that I lost interest entirely in Dragon Ball Super. And then the Funimation controversy happened, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm just not going to watch Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, on- honestly, people listening to this, go to, uh, well, you know what, I'll-, I'll do everyone a solid here, because I'll be damned if you should be deprived your favorite little things in life, because why stop watching them when you could just pirate it? Like, you can go to the thewatchcartoononline.tv right now, and you can actually watch... Well, I was watch, just going to do that anyway. I don't have money. <laughs> and you can watch uh, all, all these, uh, all the Dragon Ball Super, like, up to current, up till like, right now when it's just done. Uh, they're coming out the new season, the part two of it, really soon, and I'm really looking forward to it. But anyway, uh, let me go ahead and wrap up with my favorite uh, uh, portion of... Uh, uh, of the show, my my favorite part of the show, just like just like a fucking simpleton, like it's like I'm Simple Jack from uh uh from from who's what's it's fucking uh uh, uh uh Tropic Thunder, and I just can't seem to like just just blurt out exactly what I want to say when I want to say it. It always has to be like, well, e, um, reed fried beans and the eye zoom and oh fuck me. <laughs> you know, but but I think one of my favorite parts in uh, the entire show, of course, is uh, the one I just stated a little bit ago. It's uh, it's whenever the bad guys. It, it's kind of like when uh, a perfect cell, like soccer ball, kicks fucking Krillin's giant bald head, and he just like <laughs> spins up like just like it, from like bottom to top, and it just like drags on the ground before he slams into a fucking rock. I love it when the bad guys just all pick on Yu-Gi-Oh's Krillin, a.k.a. Joey. Because Joey Joey just getting shit on the entire series always made you feel like, hey, the bad guys, that's what the bad guy does. They they shit on that fucking do-gooder bitch's Joey's little fucking, the rules clearly stay, (laughs) and you know, like, no one fucking cares, because it's fucking Joey, and no one cares because it's Krillin in Dragon Ball Z. You know, like, the bad guys have to do a bad thing, and disrespecting Joey always put them on the map when I was a kid as the bad guy. So anyway, uh, any final thoughts? I like me a Yu-Gi-Oh a whole lot. I wish I understood the current metagame at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh what about you, Robin? Any final thoughts? 
I, I really want to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh! now. Oh, God, yeah. As soon as this is done, when I'm done editing, when I have, like, my next series of days off, I'm probably going to binge watch all the the very first OG fucking uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm going to start with or Yu-Gi-Oh! Zero, just so I know what the hell... I've never actually watched that before, and I'm, like, super, super interested in, in watching that. I wish I could remember where the fuck I was in GX so I could finish it. I don't want to... I'm always super trepidatious to restarting shows I've already started, even when I can't remember where I was. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that that, that happens. I, I hate having to start a series over again. And uh, just to remember exactly, after about, like, nine episodes, exactly where you left off, but now you Yu-Gi-Oh! forgot. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is great. Jaden, Jaden literally duels a monkey. It's great. That oh, happens. For all right, real. all right, all right. I'm, I'm going to have to put that on the shit I need to watch <laughs> then soon. Because I, I would love to see that. Ugh. All right. Well, this has been an absolutely fantastic episode. I, I think yesterday, like, uh, for those who are listening, we, we tried to do an episode yesterday. And I, I think my, my, my anger and negativity, along with the, the, uh, the title of Shit You Fucking Hate, I think that was a really bad idea, and, and that's why it's a little bit late coming out, because right around now is when I usually post the episode, but I'll be posting it later on today, because I actually have all my stuff I need to edit out and mark down. Thanks to my lovely guest, Robin, and my awesome new guest, uh, uh, the who just is a recent uh, uh, minion of the cantina, uh, Riley Brooks. Give you guys uh, give yeah. yourselves a little round of applause. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone, for coming out. And until next time, ta-ta. All right. That was absolutely – that was a ton of –